The island we went to was supposed to have been secured by the ground forces. They hadn't gotten a handle on things by the time we got there, so now we were stuck in the middle of a half-assed campaign. My job was to get the planes ready for combat, making repairs and handing them over to our troop of cons. Thing is, the enemy still had the hangars. The comms were still down, so none of us knew what the hell was going on. The last transmission I heard before everything went to shit was that some prisoners from an Ocean military penal unit rioted and managed to escape. They stole some jets and now they were flying around, taking out their former allies left and right. I wonder if any units like ours were out here, creeping around. Hearing the Ocean jets firing at each other overhead chipped away at morale. Since the radio was out, it was quiet. I liked it better that way. All I heard was the gunfire. Here we were, walking around carrying rifles. We were pilots, damn it. Friendly fire will probably kill us. You know things are desperate when the guards that used to lock us into solitary are now telling us it's better we all stick together. I guess they think our odds of surviving this war are better that way. After walking for miles across the battlefield, we came across the wreckage of a plane. Passenger, not military. I knew that rose. It was an erosion liaison plane. The guard's dogs smelled something and took off. They led us to a cliff. And the bodies. Today, I lost everything. When Osea attacked our capital, my father, a man who was never really suited to being the king, was killed. I was to be flown out of the war zone to safety, but the plane was shot down by rebels. The entire crew was killed in the crash. Soldiers appeared and one shot at me. My dog went after him and I shot him to pieces. He was my best friend. After all those speeches I gave, about working together for peace. I thought everyone felt the same as I did. <gasps> I'm sure the soldier who shot at me knew I was the princess of Arugia. He was Arugian too. More soldiers have come. Now, there is no one left to protect me. I am so numb, I cannot move. Watch as one of their dogs approaches and sniffs mournfully at my dead friend. I wonder if it grieves for him as much as I do. I can barely think. I feel weaker by the minute. I don't know who these soldiers are with, but I managed to take a sip of the water they gave me. How long have you been here? Somehow, I muster the courage to answer the woman's question. I tell her I've been there three days. They gather around me with grim looks on their faces. What would they do if they knew I was the Erosion Princess? After searching the cockpit of the plane, the woman who spoke to me before came back to me. This is an air-to-ground tactical radio. It still works! I noticed she walked with a limp. She knelt down next to me and asked her companions to give me some food. And then, very softly, she said, You see, I used to listen to your broadcasts, your royal highness. <laughs> Just what did you see here? Okay, enough talk. Your opinions have all been taken into consideration. Beyond the seizure of Forbanti, which is important, and supporting the Erusian officer. At this point, I just don't know what our strategy is, or what our mission will be. Radio communication is still patchy for both the military and civilians. 
so we're getting zip from Mission Command about our orders. Still, with countless erosion forces in the area, it's too dangerous for us to stay around here waiting for a miracle. Now, regarding Count's suggestion to think about self-defense, uh, I think we should make a break for Tyler Island. It was a large Ocean base before the start of the war. Count says his previous squadron took part in an operation to seize control of the island. It has the only base that will get us to the space elevator without refueling. It's also a transport facility for supply ships that provide drones and ammo for arsenal birds. For the Ocean forces that are looking to reclaim the space elevator, those are two great reasons in its favor. If everything went according to plan, the base may already be in Allied hands when we get there. Though based on what Count told me about the island operation, it won't be easy to seize control. If the ground troops have managed to open the bridgehead, the transport route to Osea for supply ships should be available. So much at stake, I can't imagine Arusia just giving it up without a fight. Things could really have gone bad. Even if there are enemies left, they should be pretty easy to suppress. I just want to go home, man. Me too. With that look on your face, Trigger, I know exactly what you want. If Trigger's ready to kick ass, then so am I. Damn straight. We're with you, Trigger. It's decided then. Let's get all the aircraft and haul ass to Tyler Island. Although we can avoid the Arsenal Bird's anti-air network, there's still remnants from the Erusion forces. I want to get to the island without getting into any unnecessary combat. Pick a fast craft and fix it how you want. Pack for a long trip, but remember, if you drag your ass, you'll get left behind. Sortie ASAP. Some of them aren't even wearing shoes. 
Strider Squadron, you're near an armada of bogeys. Identify them. Escort fighters, we're counting on you. Should we fire? Even if we're not fired upon? Of course. Chase off the bogeys! There's no way there are! Almost there! Commence operation, no return! These are unguided. Stay on course. Visual. Like an eagle. Identification complete. It's Erosion Bombers and their escorts. Count's prophecy has come true. Take out all bombers, or they'll flatten our allies. Plenty of civilian casualties as well. Precision bombing is impossible in these conditions. Maybe they know they can't. We're gonna drop them all.
remember, stick with Trigger and you'll make it. I have a bit of intel for you. Share it if you can help those refugees. Count me in. That's right. Echo 13, all hostiles are down. Understood. This is our last chance. We'll see how far we can go. We've destroyed all of the targets. All bogeys should be ID'd now. Mission complete. Okay, Scrap Queen. Send us the target coordinates. Don't you have a laser target indicator? I don't know.
shit. That's why I like the sky. You don't have to see those types of things. Does this mean we're that much closer to ending the war? No, we just basically prevented it from going on forever. Count's right. We have no choice but to return to our original base. Our base that is nearly out of food and fuel. We need to do something. Good. Take a seat. Everyone's here. All right. Good work in sinking the supply ships. Not to mention saving the refugees. However, we're in no position to start celebrating. Even the commander here is starting to fray from the stress. Can't say I blame him. Now, Tyler Island is in a state of complete anarchy. This base isn't safe either. The faces you see around you are the only friends we've got. Take a good look. We found a boat, then sailed away from the island. We had to. We didn't belong there. The new guy's name was George. I noticed when the anarchist said his name, he said it with a thick Belkin accent. How did you know that he was from Belka? Well, both my parents were from Belka, so... You never told me that. They say that Belkans are known for their conspiracies. <laughs> That's just a stereotype. Now, I simply stated my honest opinion and was thrown in jail for it. The princess sat there looking miserable. That was a dumbass stunt she pulled back there, but it got us on this boat. Take a look at that. This ship is heading for a single rope that's hanging down from the sky. Do you know how far the end of that rope reaches? Outer space. No. It is a direct connection to the very potential of mankind itself. Or at least it was until war erupted. It's my strong belief that... The rope might be connected to a very distant, faraway source of... of great conflict and strife. Even long before the war, the whole world started falling apart once Harling began trying to build it. I often wonder... What was going through Harling's mind when, when he was trying to destroy the very thing that so many people were sacrificed in order to create? Sacrificed? What do you mean? Have you seen all of those countless old space shuttles on Tyler Island that are no longer in use? Yeah. Huh. I always thought of them as a good source of scrap. They're an obsolete technology that was abandoned during the construction of the space elevator. Which would mean that if the space elevator was destroyed, it would be that much harder for mankind to reach the stars. Until we find another way. But even then, Harling still went ahead and tried to destroy it at the cost of his own life. That's not the way I heard it. What I heard was that he sacrificed himself to protect the tower from an incoming missile. Oh, I was told he tried to fly his ship into the tower in order to destroy it. I wonder which story is true, your royal highness. I don't know. Looking at it objectively, it's reasonable to believe that Harling had both options before him. When it comes to which one you think he took, 
I guess it's like a mirror. Yes, it is. It's like a mirror looking into your own soul, based on whichever choice you believe it was. At the moment, though, I can only see darkness. I think... I think that thing should be destroyed. It's time for the briefing. Although, since we don't have any contact with HQ, it's not like this is an official mission. Anyway, it looks like the seizure of Tyler Island and the relief from Osea have been postponed. In the meantime, we just have to do what we can to survive. Since losing its capital city of Ferbanti, Eurusian forces have separated into smaller, autonomous factions. It looks like Eurusia's largest force and leading faction will pass through the area around this base. The space elevator is significant to them, so they're probably heading there. Should we intercept? Why? I doubt they're going to start a fight now. Our top priority should be to get home. Let's go already. Yeah. It's not like we have the supplies, power, or even a real reason to put up a fight. But, what are we going to do if they bring the fight to us? We need to be ready to push them back. If we head inland from here towards Arusia, there's an old castle that's been converted into a stockpiling base. Shalaji Castle. It's currently occupied by some of the Erusian forces that broke off, but we need ammo and fuel. They appear to have converted a freeway into a runway, so we can expect them to have the capacity for air combat. But they'll be easier to handle than Arusia's lead faction. But we can't use all our aircraft to attack. The transport carrying the stolen supplies needs support. Okay, Strider Squadron. You head out first, and neuter the dogs at the stockpiling base. Rendezvous with Cyclops Squadron, who will bring the transport. Then we bring the supplies back to this base. Got it. Aircraft are our only threat. Sounds good. We'll make it. We're all gonna fly home. Together. No Ocean forces are in the region ahead. No allies here. No need to ID your target. We've set a number of priority targets, focusing on their anti-aircraft weaponry. Okay, team. Need to work. Unidentified aircraft. Not sure of friend or foe. Fire anyway. We don't have time to be wondering if they're friendly or not. So, we capture the space and take the fuel and supplies. That's the plan, right, Trigger? You take if you want to live. That's how it was where I grew up. I was just double-checking mission orders, Hoosian. Our anti-air guns are destroyed! Abandon and fall back to our rear position! Retreat! There are more vehicles along the road. They don't appear to be military. They're Arusian refugees. It must be fleeing since the conflict got worse. Nickel. Unidentified aircraft! Identify a bus from the open fire! What are they talking about? They already are firing on us. The enemy's confused. I know. This is here. We're all out of ammo. No, but the OC Don't give up. We're not going to lose our country again. So what's this faction split from the Erusian military? The autonomous state of Shalaji used to be a nation. The region has always leaned towards independence. Those who want to restore their homelands flock to it. Apparently, their core consists of officers from Vasilich, which neighbor in Shabashi. Are they our enemies? They're our enemy's enemy, but not our 
friends.
approaching at high speed. Bearing 090, straight from the east. down, Mr. X. Yeah, it's gonna take something else entirely to end this thing. I just don't know what. The resupply went well. We should be okay on food and fuel reserves for a little while at least. 
Luckily, the rumor that the Erujian army is advancing nearby is only a rumor. There's no sign of them from the skies. Rumors, rumors, rumors. This is what happens when you lose communications. But we got one good fact. The plane trigger shot down was an advanced model of the X-02 Wyvern. It was developed in the last Continental War. Erugia had a lot up their sleeves. Apparently, they were even supposed to have Belkin aircraft back in the first war. What if Trigger couldn't shoot it down? Just thinking about it gives me chills. We're lucky to be here. In war, you never know what's lurking behind the curtains. But it looks like everything's loose now. A solid chain of command, rest periods after sorties, a battlefield where you know friend from foe. All of that's gone now, lost in a fog of confusion feels like a distant dream. Now, just how the hell are we gonna get out of this mess? Oh.